Hey, True Believers, England Teen here, and yes, we know modern comics suck, and I figure, why not? Let's do a comic books were better. I've done for the 40s, 50s, 70s, 80s, 90s. Why not hit the 60s? I thought this would be the easiest decade because, you know, it's the birthplace of the Marvel Universe. Of course it's better. But what do I put in? What do I leave out? That was the big question, so I came up with a couple. I wanted to be fair to everybody, and uh, I hope you enjoy. Now, don't forget to click like and share. YouTube is throttling the hell out of this channel, so by all means, share this thing around so uh, you could help out. And if you don't mind also helping out the channel another way, go over to Patreon or Ko-Fi. Links are in the description below. And while you're over at Ko-Fi, don't forget to commission your own video. You can do your own comic books were better. Comic books were better when they were independent. Comic books were better when they were Baxter paper. Whatever you want, that's the list that I would do. It's all up to you. So go on over, put in the donation, and boom, I am yours. <laughs> but with all that said, let's get this party started. Number 10. The Galactus Saga, or I've heard people refer to it as the Galactus Trilogy. Either way, it's Fantastic Four, number 48, 49, and number 50. This is, in my opinion, one of the, if not the greatest story of the Silver Age. And it was plotted and drawn by Jack Kirby and dialogued by Stan Lee. I love the fact that they decided, okay, why don't we just make a guy with a godlike powers and so... <laughs> Jack Kirby draws a dude with a big old G on his chest just to show, hey, he's God, and he's wearing a skirt, too. Just badassery all over the place. And it's the first appearance of Silver Surfer. There's a lot going on here, ladies and gentlemen. This is If you have not yet read this, if you're a new comic book reader and you really haven't delved into the Silver Age, do yourself a favor and check these three issues out. I do not think you will be disappointed. Number nine. So what do you get when you have the United Nations Fund a Superhero Team? You get the Higher United Nations Defense Enforcement Reserves Agents, or Thunder Agents, created by Wally Wood and his scripting partner, Lynn Brown. And it was inspired, I kid you not, from the man from UNCLE. That's why it's all in, it, it's an acronym, and Thunderball, which was popular at the time. That's, that's what they came up with. We, we need to write a superhero story. And it ended up being... Uh, a bunch of guys who got these weapons after the warlord destroyed a United Nations lab. They each got weapons to fight the warlord. I swear to God, that's the name of the villain. It is so cheesy, but it's so much fun. The Thunder Agents were Dynamo, No Man, and Menthor. At least that was the first of them. And if you have a chance, you got to search the, these books. I'm sure you can find the trade paperback somewhere. You will not be disappointed but you should expect some really good cheese. Number eight. Dead Man first appearing in Strange Adventures number 205. His name was Boston Brand. He's a trapeze artist who was killed in a gangland initiation. But because of the good he had done in life, Ramakushna decided to give him powers to possess the living in order to find his killers. He was created by Arnold Drake with art by Carmine Infantino. I know a lot of people credit Neil Adams for his creation, but he actually took over from Carmine Infantino after the first issue, which, you know, mind blown to have to step into those kind of shoes, right? But, I mean, look at it. He really did make Dead Man his own and is instrumental in Dead Man's popularity. Now, I've always enjoyed the stories. I've always enjoyed this character, but if you can get it, if you can get the trade paper back with these first seven issues, I think you're going to be pleasantly surprised. It's some of the best storytelling of the uh, Silver Age. Number seven, Magnus Robot Fighter. Created by Russ Manning in 1963. It takes place in the year 4000. Actually, the comic book is called Magnus Robot Fighter 4000 AD. See, by the year 4000, society has become pretty much dependent on robots and you have some people like Magnus Robot Fighter who is trained by a robot called 1A to fight evil sentient, sentient robots. So that's his entire purpose is just to make sure that all the robots that humanity depends on don't turn into Terminators and, dest and destroy humanity. So it really is kind of like, okay, we know what's going to happen, so let's train our warriors to take down these little bastards that want to actually gain intelligence and take us out. 
It's a lot of fun. It's very cheesy. And I don't care what anybody says. Gold Key, and I'm going to give this to Dell, also had some of the best covers of the Silver Age. Just look at them. Number six. The Black Panther. First appearance in Fantastic Four, number 52, created by Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. I always thought that he had one of the best costumes of all time. And it's a very simple one, leotard-looking, cat-hooded thing. But look at it. It's awesome. Now, yes, I'm going to talk about it. There was some early rumors that Black Panther got his name from the Black Panther Party. Stan Lee vehemently denied it. And even in an issue of Fantastic Four, I believe it was number 119, 20, 120 or something like that, uh, where he went by the name of the Black Leopard. But that didn't take, so he got his name back to the Black Panther and awesomeness was achieved. I love the fact that he took down the Fantastic Four using his skill and his wit rather than just his suit, which would be what happens these days. I, I just like old-fashioned Black Panther a little bit better. Number five, the Doom Patrol, another Arnold Drake. Here we go. Arnold Drake helped create this one as well as Bob Haney and Bruno Pramani. I said that wrong, I'm sure. But anyway, they've made the first appearance of My Greatest Adventure. Right off the bat, we need to talk about the fact that they are a group of misfit freaks, hated by the world, but sworn to help it out and save it whenever they could. Yes, they were the basis of the X-Men, or at least that was a point of contention for a long time between the two companies. One other thing that I have to say about Doom Patrol that I really liked, and I did go back and read these after I saw the TV show because, my gosh, that TV show is so awesome. I had to revisit these characters. This is the very first book that ended the series with the death of all of the main characters. And, of course, a plea to bring them back <laughs> from the editor. So, guys, check it out. It's really cool. Coming in at number four, The Legion of Superheroes. Okay, this is a bit of a cheat. It is, but they only had two appearances in the 1950s. That's why I included them in the 60s. The first appearance was in Adventure Comics 247, and they were created by Otto Binder and Al Plastino. Now, they were uh, really associated with Superboy for a while, time-traveling heroes and so forth, but as the series went, as they did more appearances, they got more of a backstory where they saved the most powerful and richest man in the universe, R.J. Brand, for a murder, and he goes, hey, wait a second, we need a whole club of teenagers to protect the universe. You know, let's put kids in danger and that, all that kind of stuff. When I use the term Silver Age silliness, when I'm talking about comic book origins and everything, it's writ large in the Legion of Superheroes. Amazing stories, a lot of fun, but holy Toledo, <laughs> they are written for kids. I, I just love it. I really do. And I've loved every iteration of the Legion of Superheroes. Number three, Dr. Doom, created in 1962 and issue number five of the Fantastic Four, created by Jack Kirby and Stan Lee. For the longest time, Dr. Doom was known as the greatest villain of the Marvel Universe. I think Thanos has taken over that role a little bit now, especially in the general public size, but not mine, baby. Not mine, it's always Doom, man. And I like the way that Jack Kirby described him best. First of all, he drew him to be death. The armor is supposed to be the skeleton. Of course, he's got the hood. And at one point, Jack Kirby drew a picture of Dr. Doom underneath the mask. And it was just a perfect face with one scar that he did not hide away from the world under the mask. He hid it away from himself because he's such a perfectionist and could not stand the sight of it. He's a great villain and always should be treated as such. I hated when they made him a hero in that Iron Man book. I am so glad he is back and he is in full force. Number two. The Justice League created by Gardner Fox in 1960. All he said was, you know what? We, we reinvigorated the superhero genre. Why don't we bring back the Justice Society? But he changed society to League because, you know, more modern. And boom. Boom. Ever since, we've had some sort of incarnation of the Justice League, and it has been awesome. I like these original stories. They're silly as hell. 
once again, an embodiment of 1960s Silver Age silliness where they have a big problem, but instead of working together as a team, they break off into a whole bunch of teams of two to run about doing their little particular part of the mission that's going to end up uh, saving the world as a whole. That's exactly what happened for a lot of issues, ladies and gentlemen. Which I believe that's why the video game was like that, although the video game should have let you play the characters you wanted rather than force you to play the characters they wanted you to. And the number one comic book proving that the 1960s were better than modern day comics is... Spider-Man! First appearance, Amazing Fantasy, number 15, created by Steve Ditko and Stan Lee, and apparently everybody else, because this is one very contested uh, character as far as who created it. Anyway, uh, just watch the the covers of the first 20 issues go by here, and you can see the rogues gallery, you can see the awesome stories, the awesome art. Marvel Comics was the 60s. I'm a DC fan, and I have to admit that. DC was not doing all that well in the 60s when Marvel came around, and then they tried to play catch-up. Granted, they created some great stories and some great characters. You see some of them here in this list. But it was Marvel, and Amazing Spider-Man was their best character at the time. He's got to be on the list, and he's got to be number one. I, I love these books. There is some Silver Age silliness to it, which I do like to poke fun at sometimes when I'm reading them. But when it comes down to it, and I mean this with every intention of having the pun be intended this spider-man is truly amazing so there you go gang that is my list of 10 reasons that the 1960s were better than modern day comics what do you think what's on the list that shouldn't be and what have i left off and i know there's about a million things i got to admit when i was trying to think of independent comics my mind went blank so why don't you let me know what you think should be on the next list because you know they're coming in the comments below. And don't forget, if you like videos like this, please tell me. Say, hey, these are the kind of things we need you to make. And I will uh, just click like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you don't miss anything. Make sure your notifications are on for YouTube. Also, if you don't mind helping out the channel, because YouTube has really messed up this channel, just look at the view count. You can see starting on June 16th, they had trashed the views on this thing. And uh, if you don't mind helping out the channel here and helping me make videos for you, go on over to Patreon or to Ko-Fi. Just drop a dollar in the till, a little tip, or to BitChute. I've got a channel there. It's called I Love Comics. I can't put it here because of YouTube, and uh, they really tried to put the kibosh on me when I did that. But yeah, you can even go over to Ko-Fi now and commission a video. Say, hey, Anglantine, I want you to make this video. You just pick a category. You pick whatever you want there, and you say, hey, you do this character. You do this storyline. Do this, and I will do it. And I'm having a lot of fun with the videos that have been commissioned. You're going to be seeing some come Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, definitely. And uh, yeah, please do that. It's a lot of fun, and I get to work for my supper, basically. I prefer that sometimes. Anyway, I'd like to thank everybody who's already done that. And to everyone, all of the true believers, thank you very, very much for watching.